Hey guys, it's me again. And uh, man, we had some gorgeous weather here yesterday. So I was working outside, and uh, now I feel like I got hit by a truck. So I'm <laughs> like, oh, a little tight. Um, something that, uh, well, there's a couple of things I was really, really wanting to talk about, but uh, God whittled it down to just dealing with tough questions. And because uh, honestly, I think tough questions are one of the biggest reasons why the way a lot of the church answers tough questions is the reason a lot of people <laughs> aren't a part of God's church anymore. Not, well, they probably attended, but, you know, they just did just because, not really knowing God. I remember uh, when, uh, when I really, really started getting serious about God again when I was in high school, I was, I wanted to get baptized again, you know, start fresh. And that's, uh, so it was really important to me. So this church that, uh, that I was trying to be pretty active in, they, uh, they were cool with it. I got baptized. It was after, I guess it was after I graduated. And uh, some of my friends that were still in high school, they got baptized at the same time. So it was all of us just up there, and when it came my turn, the, uh, the pastor asked if I had anything to say or something, and I said that this was something that was really, really important to me to do as a fresh start because I had done all this studying and all this reading, and I had a relationship with the facts, <laughs> but I didn't have a relationship with God. And... Uh, you know, I got a bunch of high fives and pats on the back and everything after that. How that was the quote of the day, but that's a lot of the church, and that's why a lot of people get burned out. It's a lot easier to get burned out on traditions rather than Jesus, because Jesus, man, he's always fresh. Anyway, you know, there was uh, there's always tough questions that people ask. You know, I mean, it's just different varieties. Why did this person die? How, how come this person got sick? Why isn't God doing this in my life? And uh, man, I remember one time when uh, it was after I would gotten done working someplace. <laughs> it was between jobs, you could say. And uh, you know, I was, I just told God, hey, I don't know where you want me to go. I have this opportunity and you know I'm going to keep pursuing you but I'm going to follow that opportunity because I can't just be sedentary. I can't just sit still and do nothing and just wait for you. You know, I'd rather be in motion somehow that's not completely wrong even if it's not God's best. So I was doing that and uh, you just <sighs> doing stuff that uh wasn't completely legal at the same time. I guess you could call it theft. A victimless crime. Still a crime. And uh, so when I was doing that, I was asking God to bless me and take care of me and, and, and just fill me up with his provision while I was exploring this, uh, this entrepreneur opportunity. And then finally, I was spending some time with God. I had some downtime in the middle of this whole thing, you know, maybe a month in. And he's like, you know, how, uh, how do you expect me to get anything across to you when you're stealing from other people? Ah, <laughs> oh, man. That was a gut check. So, ended up just getting rid of a bunch of stuff. You... <sighs> You who teach don't steal. Do you steal? <laughs> ah, accountability. Huh? And man, I was at work today talking to one of my real good friends about how he's working on, uh, on building some little bed trailer that he can just tow around and drive all over the country. And he said he was at this hardware store looking at different kinds of hinges 
to kind of go flat. I guess he had to end up uh, uh, improvising with what he was wanting to do. So he said he was at this hardware store and, you know, he just he ended up needing this piece and this piece and this piece. And he said he, he just took it. He was like, man, they don't need the, or no, I, he, what he said was, man, I need the money more than they do. They can go by just fine without it. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's not trying to be a Christian. So what, what am I going to say to him that he doesn't already know? Not that he didn't go to church ever, but not exactly a passion right now. And if he's not trying to be accountable, man, who am I to shove accountability down his throat? <laughs> that's, that's one of the reasons he's not going to church. <laughs> and then, you know, we just kept talking and he kept justifying it. And then I noticed on his, uh, on his wrist, on both wrists, he had a little wristbands that said, I am blessed. <laughs> what? And then we were just talking about our dogs because he's, uh, he's got some kind of rescue dog he found on the street. Just a big rolling out, maybe 60 pounds, medium, uh, above medium sized dog. And then he started talking about how he can only feed his dog once a day because he can't afford food to feed him twice a day. <laughs> it's, what do you expect, man? You're stealing from other people. And you think God's going to get behind what you're doing? That should be an answer to one question. Why like, God's not blessing me? Why isn't God blessing me? Well, what are you doing to rip other people off? Anything? Another one, too, was, uh, man, I was at work again today. And it's like God was waiting to just dump something on me. And I was just bottlenecking right here. You know, I just... It, I wasn't quite getting it, but I knew it was there. And uh, so I was just sitting on my break at work, just minding my business. And uh, God told me there was some things I needed to clear up with some people. He gave me a list of four people. One to, uh, one to apologize to. Well, I guess two to apologize to. And two to, uh, to clear some stuff up with that got misconstrued. So I'm a quarter of the way there, and I would have been halfway there, but uh, I didn't get to cross somebody's path today. So I was sitting there whining, wondering why I wasn't hearing from God. <laughs> and then he gave me a little honeydew list of stuff that I just didn't want to do. Man, a couple of those people, I, would, I used to think, that I would enjoy my day better if I never crossed paths with them. <laughs> Obviously, that's something I'm still uh, trying to adjust. But God's holding us to a higher standard. Doesn't mean it's always the funnest thing, but He promises it's worth it, whatever He's asking us to do. So, two questions there so far. God, why aren't you blessing me? God, why can't I hear your voice? Well, in my case, it was because I was holding some grudges and uh, I was uh, not happy with some people. And just because, well, it doesn't really matter why. But they were mostly in the right, but just enough wrong in there to really, really, really irritate me. Just really get under my skin, you know, those kind of people. So... That's something I got to deal with. Because if I'm getting upset about something that doesn't have to do with people getting led away from God, <laughs> it's, a, it's an issue I got to deal with. And God's got some patience. Fortunately, He's not going to dump all the issues on us at once. <laughs> we would just we'd find us in a, in a fetal position in the corner, just bawling, sucking our thumb. <laughs> but, and then there's times, man. How come this person had to die? They had so much to offer. One of my uh, really, really, really close friends, probably uh, seven years ago now, six, seven years ago, ended up dying after some, some, uh, some pregnancy complications. And man, I did not take that well. 
I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to deal with it. Man, I just, I didn't want to believe it. I ended up just, took a couple weeks to really let my emotions finish playing out. You know, like when you're fishing, you got to play the fish some, so it gets tired and then you can reel them in. It's kind of like that with my emotions. <laughs> but finally, I was able to, uh, to find that avenue where, where God can get some stuff across to me. And he said, man, she was just tired of fighting. Proving the towel, gave up. It was her choice, not mine, not anybody else's. She could have fought through it, but she didn't. Still doesn't make it easy to swallow, but you gotta respect a person's choice, especially when they're dead. <laughs> Um, another one too, man. A uh, another real good friend of mine. Four or five years ago, I guess, ended up killing himself. And again, man, obviously that one a little more than the pre than the previous example it was his decision. But man, I kept prodding God, and it was just it was a war he was having with his emotions because he was losing so much at one time, one quick little piece in his life. He lost a lot and he didn't have much going for him outside of Jesus cheering for him and uh, some real close friends he had. But man, some estranged family, estranged kids, the job issues, money issues, housing issues. Man, I would not want to be in this position. And the devil just kept compounding it and compounding it and just manipulating his emotions to the point where he lost track of the hope that God was trying to show him at the end of the tunnel. Threw in the towel. What do you do? So, sometimes that's why people die. Sometimes it's just, you know, it sounds like a cop-out answer. But it's just because there is sin in the world. And, you know, it's not the kind, like, you know, when, when a lot of us talk about sin, we think of, of action. Like, you, you do something, and that is sin. And, yeah, but it's because what we're doing is something that's separating us from God. It's not the action so much that's that's. Yeah, the action is considered a sin, but only because God's over here and the action has taken us way over here somewhere. So it's that lack of God, basically, that we're stuck dealing with because we got sold out by the original duo, Adam and Eve. That uh, It's just like winning the lottery, man. You just get cancer, leukemia, heart disease, whatever. It's... Not a good lottery, but I mean, that's just, it's part of God. Well, it's part of Adam and Eve basically dismissing God from the planet. So now God has to work through us, and a lot of us, you know, like me, still kind of suck, and we're learning how to suck less and bring more of God in so we can exude Him to other people, so we can diffuse that that fragrance for righteousness and holiness and uh, <laughs> mortality within ourselves. You know, our, uh, our weakness made perfect in Him. I don't know if you can hear the dog playing with the squeaky toy she got, but uh, it's too late for me to shut the door. <laughs> anyway, I mean, yeah, the whole the existence of sin. And sin is basically just the absence of God. And that's where we're at in the world. And God is uh, getting pushed further and further away, <laughs> if you haven't noticed that. <laughs> but, hey, it gives us all more fun in getting to convey God to people, who God really is. You know, not to these lukewarm turds that think they know God. 
to people that just want answers that don't know how to get them. Man, a lot of people I work with don't want to know God, but they want answers. And they don't want to know God because they're their stepdad, after you know, just hanging out with their mom for years and years, their stepdad came into the picture all of a sudden, and, and he was this Bible-believing anchor in the church, and he ended up stealing, manipulating, extorting the stepkids. It's like, really, man, God is worth so much more than just trying to meet your own selfish needs like that, man. If I could find that guy, we'd have a chat. And then I'd probably, <laughs> and then he'd be on the list of, uh, of people I got to talk to and apologize. <laughs> and God's not afraid of questions. Let's just get that done. If, we, if we're agreed that God is absolute truth and he's absolute love, then... And if he's all knowing, which I uh, can be truth and not know everything, but man, he's not afraid of our questions. But a lot of times he can't really uh, drop the whole answer on us just because we're not in a place where we can hear it, and then we don't strive to be in a place where we can hear it. And that's uh, that's another reason a lot of people don't get their answers. They ask once, don't hear anything, and then move on and come up with some crap answer about how God needed another flower for his garden, and that's why this three-year-old died tragically in a car wreck. So, no. no, shut up, man. Come on. Yeah, so, questions. That's about all I got for that. Nothing I wanted to talk about was uh, find a purpose. You know, I mean, you can shape that into a question, I guess, whatever. But <laughs> there's this one guy I work with now, one of my best friends. He uh, he does not like church people. I remember going to this, I think it was a Catholic boarding school, and that was more than enough religion for him. And he never looked back. But he and I have have a grand old time at work, man. It's like it's two bodies, one mind. <laughs> we just it's great. But uh, as much of a front as he likes to put on about being strong and driven, every once in a while he'll uh, he'll throw something out there that that just. Spells it all out, man, and you just know he's looking. There was one day he and I were uh, were doing some work, probably five feet apart from each other, doing different things, just chatting away. And, and somebody else, came, somebody else came and uh, and asked if, if one. Of, I'm gonna use the door, and uh, asked if uh, one of us could could help him out with a project. So I just kind of stood there because I'm not real fond of the guy because he was uh, he lied to me about some stuff. And I just don't really want to be around him, <laughs> to be honest. So I was standing there trying to think of a good one-liner to, uh, to let him know I was just a little irritated with him. And then since I was stalling, my buddy jumped in and he, he volunteered himself to go help this guy out. And then they ended up just having to lift something up, and it wasn't that bad. It took 30 seconds. And uh, then my buddy came back, and we were talking, and I told him why I kind of stalled out. And now the dog wants in. Um, and why I stalled out. And he was like, man, I knew there was a reason I came to work today. I knew, I knew there was some kind of purpose that wasn't me being here today. <laughs> See, don't come up. Come on. <laughs> She's not a good jumper. She's not the most. Come on. She's not the most graceful. This the dog. Little beagle. <laughs> anyway, she's the one that makes the most noise in the house. I think. Um, 
But yeah, man, he's just, you know, looking for purpose. And that embodies a whole lot of people that work. But how can you find purpose, say, when God's not involved, man? Then you, you're just kind of floating around hoping for the best. Like this friend of mine that said her spirit guide was in her mind, and then it, it guides her over here and over here. And it's, I mean, <laughs> that's, uh, that's completely biased and partial because you're looking from within. It just seems to be deeper than the level where you usually think at. And it's manipulated by emotions. Right, Pat? Yep. <sighs> but man, if we got to start by not being afraid of questions, by chasing these questions, because it's not like God wants that to be a mystery. Paul talks about mysteries in the New Testament simply because it's stuff that we don't know. Man, it's like opening presents on Christmas Day. Yeah, we're supposed to have these gifts. And part of the joy is unwrapping them, is unraveling the mystery. It, it's okay <laughs> if we feel stupid. That ought to be a motivation enough to start finding these answers, not only for us, but for everybody that God's given us. Everybody that wants, that God wants to cross paths with us. That God has set aside to be impacted by each one of us, you know, individually, as we learn to walk with God. And if you ask God questions, He wants to give you the answer. But it's like taking a flight of stairs. Even if you take two or three steps at a time, you still got to take steps to get to the top. And then, Sometimes the answer is a little bigger than what we expect. And if we don't think that God doesn't talk to us, that was one reason I got, uh, I don't want to say kicked out of a church, but I had a, a, a kind, loving, reprimanding from the same guy that helped me pray the sinner, that, that led me through the sinner's prayer. <laughs> because I told him stuff that God had said to me and that didn't float his boat and he just and he's still the same what uh, 12 years later God wants a whole lot more for us and going beyond the uh just the tough questions. We've got to settle in ourselves who God is, how God sees us, what God wants to do through us, and what God wants from us. And, you know, that's it's something that everybody in ministry has had to, to deal with at one point or another. I mean, to some extent, anyway. It's not like every minister has arrived. <laughs> Come on. But, you know, it's not arrogance to expect the favor of God to open doors for me. You know, I mean, not like a chivalrous gentleman or something, but to, like, to open opportunities. Or it's not arrogance to expect the favor of God, the, the presence of God, to follow me around. Man, there's, uh, where I work, they're, uh, they're expanding. And this one they're opening, this other, this next place of business that they're opening is a whole lot closer to my house. And I'm definitely, well, unless God really persuades me otherwise, I'm definitely taking this one that's opening, this, this, this new work sight and uh, I'm curious the people I've worked with for two years and some change what will change with them if they'll notice a difference when I'm not around because man most of the time 
if I'm not messing with people at work, like my like this buddy of mine looking for purpose, or a couple other people, if we're not having fun, I'm trying to just pray in tongues under my breath every chance I get at work, and I believe that makes a difference. And this uh, this guy looking for purpose, he was telling me a couple weeks ago that uh, that he and his wife quit smoking so much weed. Instead of like five times a day, <laughs> they were just doing it right before they went to bed. And he's like, man, I, my house has never been so clean. <laughs> but now he was telling me it's just something that, that he was proud to tell me. I mean, you could tell he was trying to be kind of reserved and, and macho, but you, know, you could tell it was, uh, and I was, man, I was excited to hear it. Not just because, oh, that means I can get another notch on my belt. But it's like, dude, you're taking control of your life, man. You don't have to rely on this or that, this or that. And then once you start trying to learn how to stand on your own, it's a lot easier. <laughs> it's a lot easier to find God than when you're trying to uh, reduce your crutches. And I was just talking to another guy last week. Same thing. Man, this guy in his apartment's like, yeah, you know, I really try to cut back smoking weed. Not just because of the money thing, but just because. It's just something I feel like I need to do. See? And uh, I think she sees a squirrel outside. But and he was like, man, you know, my apartment's never been so clean. <laughs> and this guy, this other guy, man, that's living in the apartment, he's just a really gentle, kind guy. The phone where I asked him if he was a Bible thumper, and uh, you know I'd I'd rather keep that kind of thing just to myself most of the time, unless I see a real good opportunity. See, um, but I asked him, and he was like, "Well, uh, kinda." See, it's okay. These squirrels aren't gonna go anywhere. <laughs> But they, it's not arrogance to just realize that they get something from me because I bring God with me to work as best I can. There is a, still a lot of personal instructions <laughs> in my own heart that keep God from moving just because he's uh, watching out for me. Otherwise, I'd be uh, just another one of those ministers on TV that you hear about that, having issues, scandalous things. But, man, God's working with me where I'm at as much as I'm letting him. And that's something he wants to do with everybody. But it's a matter of the heart. you got to be open and honest with God. Just <laughs> be real with him, man. It's, you don't have to pull any punches because he knows you better than you know yourself. So, why not learn about yourself from him instead of trying to teach yourself about yourself because it hasn't helped out that many people that I know of so far. I think that's about all I got today. So, man, even if it's just walking around your neighborhood or around the living room or whatever, just ask God some questions. Keep asking and look for answers. Because God will confirm the answers that he's trying to get across to you. Yeah, it's a game, but it's like Christmas time, man. It's, it, parents aren't going to let their kids open a bomb. <laughs> right? <laughs> but if the kid hides the present and then runs and tries to unwrap it in the backyard and the parent doesn't know anything about it, well, not much the parent can do if the kid's trying to hide from it. That's how God is, man. God's got all these presents for us, all this, all this wisdom, all this knowledge, all these just tiny little tweaks in our thinking that will just completely change how we see life. But how? What are we doing to get? What are we doing to receive what He's trying to give us? So, man, questions. Ask Him to God if there's anything I can do. Man, shoot me a line on Nick to snap. Because uh, I've had to deal with some hard questions just in my own life, man. I don't even know if I've got all the right answers. But 
I'm trying to have a teachable heart before God. And that's the first thing God asks for. So, love you guys. We'll chat next week.